Good morning, church. When I was asked to deliver a tribute to our day loving departed Aunt Keitha, I readily agreed to do so, knowing that I will be able to share with other family and friends my memories of her. My name is Shirley George, and this morning, I'm here to offer tributes to my Aunt Keitha on behalf of myself, my sister Harriet Bess, and my brothers Desmond and Lena Holder Jr. My sister Harriet, who resides in Atlanta, says, I have fond memories of my Aunt Keitha, who was a child of God. She was an avid reader whose wisdom and encouragement was shared with all whom she encountered during her life here on earth. I remember speaking with her on her 99th birthday, and I said, Auntie, I hope we can have this conversation same time next year. Her response was, if it is God's will. She was always encouraging young people to walk the straight and narrow way. She loved to dress and always had a smile, which was affectionate. We are thankful that God gave her a long life where she built relationships with those she came in contact with. She was a champion in her own right and at her age still had a song mind. What a blessing. Sleep on auntie until we meet again. God bless and you always remember and remain forever thankful for your guidance. My brother Desmond wrote, Auntie Keitha was a very wonderful motherly person. I always felt welcome and warm in her presence. We often talk about Jesus and his wonderful works for the children of men. I have been the recipient of her many wise discourses. I have never seen or heard her angry. She had a heart of gold. I will surely miss her, and I hope to see her in the first resurrection when Jesus comes to awaken his sleeping saints to take us to heaven, to live and reign with him in the new Jerusalem. My younger brother, Lino. My Auntie Keitha was a nice, wonderful lady. I enjoyed going to visit her, and on some occasions, my daughter Shania would accompany me. As soon as I shout Auntie, she would ask, who's the person? I would reply, Junior. Then she would say, Junior, you have to hold on, the old aunt can move so fast because it's get a little giddy. We will sit and chat for a while. Her, mem her memory was very short for her age. She would ask for everyone, when she was talking to Shania about boys, you should see the expression on her face. She would always tell her to get an education first. She was loving and would be greatly missed. Rest in peace, Auntie. From Shirley. <laughs> I will always remember my Aunt Keitha was a very kind and God-fearing woman. In all our conversations, she would remind me to always put God first. Her words, Without him, we are nothing. Auntie Keitha always had a welcoming smile whenever I visited her house. In recent years, I did not get a chance to visit as often, made up with my weekly chats on the phone. She loved rainy days. I fondly remember when my parents were alive, and every Christmas day she would come to St. John and spend that day with us. It was an occasion that myself, her great nephew Von Reich, and my daughters Felicia and Janine always looked forward to. Auntie was fun to be around. Auntie Keitha and my mom shared a special bond as they celebrated birthdays one day apart. My mom on March 17th and Aunt Keitha on March 18th. She loved family and would also inquire about my siblings here and abroad and also our children and grandchildren, always sending her love to them. When I got the news of her passing, it hit me hard. As my cousin Grace and I were talking about her earlier that morning, I love you, I will miss you, Auntie. Sleep in peace and rise in glory. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Today, I will pay tribute to my great aunt through a personalized memorial poem. Many called her Gran, Kiki, Auntie Ki, 
Auntie Keitha, but for me, I called her Auntie. A poem entitled, Auntie, My Gem. A loving and kind lady living in Promenade Road, the queue. Other than my parents, she was the first person I knew. From a newborn baby, she caressed me in her arms, never letting anyone or anything cause me harm. A sweet word and a warm embrace, she would always greet me with a smile on her face. With her strong Christian faith, she recited Bible verses and hymns dutiful. Our favorite daily song was All Things Bright and Beautiful. Every morning, her enamel cup would be filled with tea. Doing short chores, she sipped intermittently. I would ask, isn't that tea cold, Auntie? She would respond, don't you worry, it is just right for me. A favorite pastime was our evening strolls through the surrounding avenues. We often stopped to pick flowers and grass and chat with the many people she knew. Her values and principles were very strong, taking many under her wing. She taught us all right from wrong. Be respectful, have good manners, and always be on time were just a few of the morals she instilled to keep us in line. Flogging and punishment were not her reprimand style. Instead, a stern talking and giving advice were disciplinary methods she found more worthwhile. Her guidance and wise counsel were not for only those in childhood years, but also included adults who regularly called her for a listening ear. Her tone and mood was always kind and soft, but rub her the wrong way and she would tell you where to get off. Her culinary skills could put any top chef to the test. Cuckoo, flying fish, soup, lasagna, rice, frizzled salt fish, to name a few, these were simply the best. Speaking of food, there were some treats in which she did partake a juicy mango, or her favorite, an authentic Bajan fish cake. She was a fountain of knowledge of natural remedies. If you were unwell, she would quickly give you some ginger or bay leaf tea. She enjoyed watching soap operas, Matlock, or better yet, a Steven Seagal film. She would say, Ree, you know I like to watch pictures with him. When Auntie was going out, she always had to look her best. Hair fixed, nails polished, and a dab of lipstick, a fashionable hat and shoes to match her immaculate dress. Auntie was in sync with her loved ones and never missed a beat. She would know if you weren't well or worried. From her, no secret you could keep. Over the years, she became my trusted confidant. For major decisions and grand occasions, it was her blessing which I would want. She watched me become a wife and a mother twice. Her wisdom I sought daily when I called her for advice. She was well loved and appreciated by many. Local and long distance family calls and friendly house visits, she had plenty. Auntie lived a full life, an astounding 102 years. But now, her sun has set and treasured memories is what we have to hold dear. My dearest Auntie, you raised me well. Put God first, do your best, you always told me. Your legacy values, I now impart on my own family. You were my gem. No one could ever or will ever take your place. I will forever speak of you with pride, honor, and grace. Sleep in perfect peace, Auntie. I love you. Good morning, church. This is a tribute to my auntie, Keitha. My name is Melanie Solda. Keitha Verona Hunt, also known as Auntie Keitha, Kiki or Grand, was blessed by the Almighty to live the beautiful age of 102 years and seven months with all her mental faculties intact. She was a loving, caring, straightforward person who often told you like it was, so you could like it or lump it. If you're wrong, she will let you know in no uncertain way that you're wrong. She loved to eat the fruits and vegetables which were grown in my garden. She said that reminds her of her late brother Lloyd, who was my grandfather. She enjoyed golden apples, mangers, 
sugar apples, banana, sorrel, bonavis, and green peas. She will also order spinach leaves to boil and drink the water because she claimed that she had low pressure and was lightheaded like her late father. She also enjoyed breadfruit and will call and tell me, don't bring the breadfruit unless you bring pink tails here. And who, could, and who was I to tell a woman who was 100 years old to live with the pigtail? She will also tell Jonna, make sure you put lots of pepper and onion in the corned beef cakes. So now you all know the secret to long life. It's pigtails and corned beef cakes with lots of pepper. When she wanted pizza, yes, she ate pizza. She will remind Jonna, don't, bring the, don't put the pineapple from the temple on my pizza here. I want fresh pineapple on my pizza. Auntie Kita loved the goodies from my garden. Pumpkin fritters prepared by Janelle. Conkeys all year round. Cassava porn, light fruit cake, sweet bread, golden apple juice, and sorrel drink. When I was going to Canada, she told me to make sure I find a rich white man to marry. Well, for everyone who asking me if I found one, well, that is my business. Auntie Kita I will always remember you. We share a special bond. I thank you for being a great advisor and role model. Rest in peace. Sleep on my beloved aunt, and you rise in glory.
can't stand. So yes, I see. Him. Of the that's fine. That's okay. fine. Please stand. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live, or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. In the midst of life, we are in death. From whom can we seek help? From you alone, O Lord, who by our sins are justly angered. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Lord, you know the secrets of our hearts. Shut not your ears to our prayers, but spare us, Lord. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. O worthy and eternal judge, do not let the pains of death turn us away from you at our last hour. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our sister, Keitha Borona, for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. 
Let us therefore with confidence pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister, Keitha. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. May she and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Please be seated for the eulogy to be delivered by Mr. Ian Mack. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. As you can see, my grandmother got exactly what she wished. On her favorite day, a rainy day, she's being put to rest. I heard all the tributes, and they were all true. My grandmother was all that they said and more. For me, she was just grand. But she was my heart. She raised many of her family, came through that door at Promenade Road, and they all left better than when they came. She, she, didn't, she wasn't blessed by the Lord with wealth, but she had health, longevity, and a good heart. Finally, that heart gave out, and it gave out just in time. No one knows the future, and no one should complain about the past, because the past is past. My mother wasn't able to see this day but I'm sure she and my grand are together. Don't shed any more tears for grand, because she'll tell you, stop it, stop it. You, you're a big man. You be a man now. You go ahead. You live your life. I live mine already, which is true. And we can't dwell in the past. We can only hope for the future. And as my grandmother always said, put God first and everything else will take care of itself. As my mother would say, this is going to be short and sweet. I thank you all. She thanks you all. I thank you all again. Because without you guys, my grandmother would not be what she is today for you all to come out and pay a tribute to her. She lived for this. She lived for charity. And even though she would complain, Ian, you do too much for too many people, I'm saying, look at who I had as an example. Thank you all for coming. May God bless you all. We'll now have a musical tribute by Miss Cara Hunt.
the opening hymn, Angel Voices Ever Singing, hymn 363. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant, Keitha Verona, and we pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first Bible reading. Good morning, church. Today I'll be reading the scripture of Revelation 7, verses, 7 to 6, verses 9 to 17. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, 
praise and glory, and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength to be our God forever and ever. Amen. Then there were elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who have came to the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them from their presence, from his presence. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be the shepherd. He will lead them to springs and living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here ends this Bible reading. Please remain seated as the choir leaves us in the psalm, Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd. Please remain seated for the second Bible reading. Good morning, church. Good 
John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6 and verse 27. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Here is the way we read it. The hymn before the address, I know that my Redeemer lives. of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. The passing of our sister, Keitha Verona, mother, grandmother, friend, and long-standing member of this church has brought us together this morning. We have come to celebrate her life and her witness and to give God thanks for his faithfulness to her and to us throughout all the days of our lives and to entrust our sister into God's eternal care. The psalmist in Psalm 90 verse 10 to 12 gives the general lifespan of man. He says, the days of our age are threescore years and ten. And though men be so strong that they come to four score years, yet is their strength then but labor and sorrow, so soon it passeth away. To live a long, full life then is a blessing from the Lord. 
But no matter what age one might obtain, eventually, unless our Lord and Savior returns, we will die. And while this is true, it is also true that it is a wonderful and glorious thing to die in the Lord. To die knowing that we are in right relationship with God, that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. To be able to live our lives so that when we die, we will be with Christ is not only a wonderful thing, but it gives us peace. So many of us lack peace, not only at funerals, but in our daily lives. God wants each and every one of us to have peace. Jesus died that we might have peace with God, which is ours when we accept him as Lord and Savior of our lives. And we put our trust and our hope in him, even as the soloist this morning reminded us as she sang about that trust in God. As we gather here this morning to celebrate the life and witness of our sister Keitha, God offers us his peace. Peace that will give us the strength that we need to deal with this difficult time in our lives. A peace that if we let it, will undergird us and help us in the days ahead. It is a gift from God who promises, according to the prophet in the book of Isaiah, that he will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed, rooted, established, built on him. This peace that God offers us is a gift. It is a gift from a loving, compassionate God who says that through his son Jesus, that he is the resurrection and he is the life. Those who believe in him, even though they die, as we began this morning service with that sentence, even though they die, they will live. And everyone who lives and believes in him will never die. And so we join, we join with the hymn writer and we say, because he lives, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone because we know who holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. We can have peace this morning because we can rest in the knowledge that our sister Keitha accepted the good news of the gospel, accepted the good news of God's salvation. She held fast to her confession of faith. She was regular in receiving the blessed sacrament of Holy Communion. And she looked not to herself for eternal salvation, but she looked to Almighty God. Last Tuesday when I met with Sister Keith's family, as I often do with family members, I invited them to share with me the hymns that they wanted sung for this morning's service. And as is so often the case, family members introduced me to the beautiful hymn we just sung before this address. I know that my Redeemer lives. As I reflected on the hymn throughout the week, I decided to do a quick online search to find out what the author had in mind in writing this hymn. The hymn, written by Samuel Medley, is from the 18th century. My Redeemer Lives is an affirmation, a celebration. The writer who talks about this hymn says, it is an affirmation, a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. The words rejoice in the life of Jesus and the salvation that is promised and given to us in him. I have no doubt that our sister believed, and not only believed, lived her life in accordance to this belief. 
And if I had any doubts about that, as Ian spoke this morning, and he talked about his granny and how she said, put God first, and everything else would fall into place, I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that she lived her life in accordance to this belief that Jesus is indeed her redeemer and that he has promised her resurrection. Hers was a long life and no doubt she endured challenges as we all do. But like the passage of scripture found in the book of Job on which this beautiful hymn, My Redeemer Lives, is based, I believe that she too declared, as Job did, that the winds may blow, the tempest may roar, but I know my Redeemer lives. Trouble may come, but I know my Redeemer lives. Ill health may destroy my body, but I know that my Redeemer lives. Financial crisis may come, but I know my Redeemer lives. But more than that, more than a belief and a knowledge, is this. The writer of Job goes on to say, and at the last, he will take his stand, his position on this earth. Even after my skin is destroyed, yet from my flesh I shall see God, whom I myself shall behold, and whom my eyes shall see and not another. And at the thought of seeing God, Job says, my heart faints within me. His heart faints at the pleasure that he derives from the knowledge that one day he will see God. For those who believe in Jesus, trust in him and follow him, we have the promise of eternal life. Jesus has promised us eternal life, a life with him in another kingdom, the kingdom of God, where we will be welcomed as residents for all time in a home, in a mansion that has been prepared for us. This morning, again, as this lesson was read, we heard again the promise. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. In my father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I wouldn't have said it. But I go to prepare a place for you, so that where I am, there you may be also. That is the promise. He's not going to leave us alone. For I will be with you, he says. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. When we lose a loved one, there is pain, grief, and sorrow. Irrespective of how young or how old, there is always pain and sorrow. But there is also, too, rejoicing. For those of us who have lived our lives believing, for as Christians, we believe that death is but the gate to life eternal. So the final word here this morning is not death, it is life. That is the promise. The promise is to life. And so death is but that gate that opens up the way to life eternal. Death for the Christian simply means, as the Apostle Paul puts it, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. And that is what we sing when we sing that beautiful hymn, Forever with the Lord. That is what we will be, forever with the Lord. But what about now? What about now, this morning? What are we to do now that our sister Keitha is not with us? In our grief, yes, we will miss her. We will miss her smile, her touch, her words of wisdom, her very presence, just knowing she is there. But by faith, we must believe 
that she is now in the presence of God. Where there is no more pain, no more tears, no more crying. And I say amen to that. And Jesus assures us with these comforting words that he will never forsake us, he'll never leave us. And that he will come to us. And as he comes, the second lesson reminds us he will bring us his peace. He invites us this morning and every day to stay our minds on him so that he will keep us in that peace that he has promised. And this morning, God has kept his word of peace and comfort to us. For as we reflect on Sister Keitha, we remember a sister who was very well appreciated by the members of this parish as evidenced by your attendance here. And so our sister Keitha has gone home to be with her Lord and Savior, her friend. And this should, this should warm our souls and make us glad. She has left behind the things of this world. She has left behind the things of this world. And she has gone ahead meeting with those who have gone before her. Until at last, we are all going to be reunited. We entrust our sister into God's care. Trusting that we will indeed meet again. And so on behalf of the entire parish family here at All Souls, I extend condolences to family and friends who grieve, praying that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Be assured of our love and support for you. And remember what the hymn writer says, peace, perfect peace with sorrows surging round. On Jesus' bosom, naught but calm is found. Peace, perfect peace, death shadowing us and ours. Jesus has vanquished death with all its powers. It is enough, earth's struggle soon shall cease. And Jesus calls us to heaven's perfect peace. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. May she and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Let us now stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed found in your booklet, the creed in which our sister Keitha lived and died. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Holy Catholic Church, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing for the prayers. Your response after each petition is. Hear us, Lord. For our sister, Keitha Verona, let us pray to the Lord Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Keitha and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Raise our sister to eternal life. Hear us, Lord. 
you promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Father of all, we pray for our sister Verona and for all Keitha and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May she and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. During the singing of this hymn, To God Be the Glory, a collection will be taken for the upkeep of the church. The hymn, To God Be the Glory, 387.
please remain standing for the commendation, and that will be followed by the committal, given the inclemency of the weather. Sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art Let us commend our sister, Keitha Verona, to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Deliver your servant, Keitha, O sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we humbly commend your servant, Keitha, Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me, and I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the spirit, they may rest from their labors for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow he flees and never stays. In the midst of life we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister, Keitha Verona, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this, our sister Keitha, and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity. We give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants, who having finished their course in faith now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant to her, O Lord.
May she and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord let his face shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon her and give her peace now and forevermore. Amen. As we prepare to leave the church, we leave on that wonderful hymn, the Nunc Dimittis. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and giving life to those in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen, giving light to those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord will guide our feet into the way of peace having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in his name, saying, Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Sister Keitha, into paradise may the angels lead you. At your coming may the martyrs receive you and bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Remember, O Lord, this your servant who has gone before us with the sign of faith and now rest in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant to her and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Together let us say the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord give you 
light his countenance upon, and give you peace, and give you peace, and give you peace, and give you peace, and give you peace my Lord. Be great.